Brian, this term may sound a little strange to most farmers. Neonicotinoids. Are you using neonicotinoids on your farm? Well, you may say, I'm not even sure what that is. But the answer is probably yes. If you're raising a crop, chances are you're using some neonicotinoid insecticides in your seed treatment program. Years ago, there used to be a lot of harmful insecticides that were used in agriculture, but fortunately, they've been replaced by relatively safe things like the pyrethroids, which come from a flower, and the neonicotinoids that are in the chemical family of nicotine. And while I realize nicotine is harmful if you're smoking it every day, it's actually pretty safe for you to handle when it's on a seed treatment. Now, don't get me wrong, we want you using personal protective equipment and using good caution, reading the label, and all of those types of things. Well, these neonicotinoids, specifically Poncho, Gaucho, and Cruiser, they are way safer than the old insecticides we used to deal with. They're way more effective than the old insecticides we used to have as well. And they're systemic. Plus, they really don't cost a whole lot of money. So when you add it all up, these things are great for agriculture. They've increased worldwide production of ag products by billions of dollars in our estimation. But here's the problem. There have been some talks lately about countries and even continents banning neonicotinoids. Well, if you would Google search neonicotinoid insecticides, you're going to read a whole lot of bad stuff that people are saying. Oh, these things are terrible. Oh, they're hurting bees. They're doing all these bad things. You know, when we're using them in agriculture, our primary use is seed treatments where they're safely down beneath the soil, and nothing else above ground is really going to come in contact with them. So we aren't seeing really any issues that way. Where we can potentially see issues is when neonicotinoids get used post-emerge. And when companies have products that are very successful, I understand the temptation to say, you know, let's use them in some other ways too. Let's use them post-emerge. We can add them in. We'll get another mode of action in our post-emerge sprays, and they'll have some residual control. Yeah, they will. And they can be helpful post-emerge too. But they're so valuable to us as seed treatment insecticides, to me, it's just not worth the risk of using them post-emerge, and that's where we've run into some problems. Just a few months ago, Darren and I were out in the state of Oregon. We were literally on the site where a worldwide controversy started because a guy decided he was going to spray something like 10 trees with a neonicotinoid product post-emerge. He shouldn't have done it, but he did. He killed some bees. It's literally worldwide press. Europe has now banned neonicotinoids for the next couple of years. The state of Oregon, they've also banned neonicotinoids for a while. It's ridiculous. It's because one guy sprayed 10 trees. Who cares? But the point is, for all of us in agriculture, we've got to be smart. and We've got to realize that a whole bunch of people are governing us that have no idea about farming. So why are we risking the most valuable seed treatment we've got in the world over some post-emerge sprays? Quit spraying it post-emerge. There are no alternatives for seed treatment insecticides. There's nothing that's even close to it that's going to be at that safety level or that kind of control. That's how important this is for us. So our advice to you is quit using Belay, quit using Endo, to go, quit using leverage. And I know these chemical companies aren't going to be real happy when they hear me say that, but I don't care. We need to save those neonicotinoids for pre-emerge use, use on the seed. Quit using them post and then all these controversies over killing bees, it's pretty much all going to go away. Everybody's going to forget about it, and then we can keep using our valuable seed treatment in the right fashion, not using it post. Well, we aren't saying there's anything wrong with those products inherently. They aren't bad products. They're fine. They just aren't post-emerge treatments that we should be using because there are just lots of alternatives that could be used instead. Right. This is one of the most important things we want you to think about on your farm next year. But another important thing is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up next.